U.S. banks started to make it easier for companies and households to borrow money in the second quarter. That's according to the Fed's latest bank survey. The Fed also said that large banks were more eager to provide credit for home loans. But no major changes were observed with regards to loans for commercial real estate. So, how is the commercial property market faring stateside? Let's get uh, straight to Phil Blumberg, Chairman and CEO of Blumberg Capital Partners, joining us live out of New York. Phil, good to see you, and uh, welcome back to the good show. Good to see you again. Uh, what, what is going on with the, the, on the financing side for uh, commercial real estate? Well, I think on the financing side, you're still going to face a great deal of problems. You know, we were going through the highest-priced so-called boom with the highest amount of leverage and when you put those two together any easing of the market is going to cause a major failure in the financing markets that's going to continue for the next uh, two to three years as you see maturities in the commercial uh, mortgage market but that doesn't mean that the commercial markets aren't recovering it just means that that the uh, lending that went on before was done uh, without much prudence and without any foresight Phil, what about the appetite? Because the data that came out from the Fed that Marty was just mentioning showed that even though banks are making it easy to lend money, there's just not a lot of appetite still. What are we seeing on the commercial side? I don't think on the commercial side you're seeing quite as much loosening as, as perhaps in other areas. Bear in mind they've got a lot of commercial defaults coming. And it's awful hard to put out commercial loans when that's the fire that's creating much of the problems for the banks, particularly the mid-market banks and the regional banks. So I don't think we're seeing much loosening. And in fact, I think you're going to see financing sources come from private hedge funds and other sources rather than commercial banks. I was going to say, I mean, with uh, you're looking at more defaults, more distress sales, etc. If you are an entity or a party with a lot of powder dry, uh, you're, you're in a pretty good position, it sounds like. That's exactly right. We're looking at some of the best discounts I've seen in, in many decades in the commercial office market. Now, bear in mind, that's not the residential market. The residential market is, is trying to stabilize. It's a bit uneven throughout the country. But the commercial office market dominated by office buildings, well, uh, these are the highest discounts we've seen, as I said, in many decades. And yet the returns are coming off. They were 13% negative about a little over a year ago. It, we're in the second quarter of a positive return environment, a recovery, uh, with returns at 4% now, and we expect 6 to 8% by the year end. Mm. Phil, you just mentioned the uneven recovery for residential, but isn't it somewhat the same when it comes to commercial? Because if you look around the states, we've got markets moving at different paces. New York, for instance, very different to what's unfolding in the likes of Colorado. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, whenever you look at real estate, you have to look at the local market. What I meant by residential is that the entire residential market, without regard to the local market, is still uneven. Whereas if you take the commercial market as a whole, it is a positive 4% this last quarter. And, I, and as I said, I think we'll be at 6 to 8. But you've got to look market by market. New York's attracting capital, particularly foreign capital, that's driving yields down and prices up. I don't mean that they're at a point that's imprudent, but I mean that you're seeing strong recovery in some, in some parts of the New York commercial market. Um, where you see job growth, you see recovery in office buildings, and strongly. Yeah, Phil, I was about to ask you that. Uh, where are the buyers coming from? Is it ostensibly uh, from overseas? Uh, the buyers are, the capital flows from abroad are, are really the, the prime motivating force. And I think that's because a lot of capital domestically is tied up in poor investments in the real estate. You're seeing a lot of, unfortunately, in some markets, you're seeing chasing yields. You're seeing short-term decisions to, um, to buy into central London, as an example, and they, they cause prices to actually rebubble. But here in the U.S., our discounts are so strong that the capital flows coming in are probably seeking safety. They're looking for good yield, and they're looking for long-term protection from inflation. And they're getting that when they invest in commercial. What type of yields are you talking about at the moment? Uh, what can you achieve on uh, commercial property in the States, Phil? Well, you can, you can buy on what we call a cap rate at 7 to 8% with a cash flow yield somewhere in the 4 to 4.5% 4 range. And those are moving up as we see rents moving up as well. The NACREF uh, index, which is the key benchmark in commercial property, is strongly moving up over the last, since the beginning of the year. And that's both rents and its valuations. Yeah, Phil, uh, one area that's really taken off here is real estate investment trusts. Just how uh, deep is the penetration in your neck of the woods? Real estate investment trusts vary from, from regulatory environment to regulatory environment. I think when you talk about a, a REIT that has a large investment in, in apartments, residential, warehouses, they make sense. 
when you talk about commercial property REITs, they can get damaged because REITs in the U.S. are required to distribute a great deal of their income. And if you don't have the cash available uh, in a down market or in a, in a financing need, uh, it, it puts a lot of pressure on management. And managing uh, an aircraft carrier like an office building portfolio on a quarterly basis isn't as wise as it may apply to apartments and warehouses and so forth. So it's okay. a mixed, it's, I think it's a mixed bag there. It's really a way to tap capital sources that are public, and it's a way to, um, for some to refinance out by going, going public. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you're, what you're doing with REITs is you're securitizing your, your cash flow from, uh, from rentals. Phil, let me ask you, I mean, let's say an investor uh, has been sitting through the last five minutes listening to you and go, okay, uh, this sounds like a great opportunity. I am not a high net worth individual, but I do have uh, a nice chunk of change to play with. How do I get exposure? How do I invest in U.S. commercial real estate? Well, you either invest in, in funds that are available for uh, for investment in commercial properties, but boy, you want to look and make sure the track record of the manager has been strong through these downturns. The other is you can get some exposure if you go through um, through REITs that prudently have have um, capitalized over the last six months. In fact, there was a boom in REIT capitalization in the U.S. And so I would say that looking at residential REITs, I'd also say there's may, there may be some home builders that one wants to look at. So on the public markets, you have the home building. On the private markets, funds offer probably the best outlet for a diversified portfolio. Mm -hmm. okay. Good to hear your thoughts and to have that snapshot again. Come back and visit us back here in Singapore again next time. I Philip look forward Lundberg to it. I'll on see the you show. Soon.